ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear beloved brothers, sisters and viewers Welcome to a new episode of this show, the Tajweed show I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from you all your fast your tilawah of Qur'an, your recitation of Qur'an, and your prayers at night. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah, we managed to cover a number of topics so far. Um, we finished all Makharij al-Huruf, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We started on Sifat al-Huruf um, and spoke about the two different categories. We mentioned that there are two different categories or types of, of uh, Sifat attributes. And we said that is the, the attributes that have opposites and the attributes that have no opposites. And we started with the group of attributes that have opposites. And we said there are five groups and in total there are 10 or 12 or 11 um, uh, attributes there. We spoke about the first group which was Al-Hamsu wal jahru And then we spoke about uh, Al-Shiddatu wal rakhawa And in the middle of them we have at tawassut And then we have the third attribute or group of attributes, sorry which is At-Tafkhimu wa At-Tarqiq. At-Tafkhim, which is the full mouth letters, and At-Tarqiq, which is the light or empty mouth letters. And they are opposite to one another. And we started on the letters of Tafkhim, and, and we mentioned that the, the letters of Tafkhim are seven. They are, that are permanently always Mufakham. And we said Mufakham means that are made heavy. We said, they are seven, and we remember them in the sentence خُصَّ ضَغْطٍ قِظٍ So those are the letters خَ, صَاد, ضَاد, غَيْن, طَ, قَاف, and ضَ Then we spoke about three letters that are sometimes heavy and sometimes light. Um, we said they are the alif, lam, and ra. And we mentioned the conditions for the alif being heavy or light. And we also did the same with the um, letter lam. We said that it will sometimes be heavy or light. We mentioned that it will only be heavy in certain conditions. All these conditions would be when the lamb is in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, we also spoke about the letter ra. And we said that the letter ra is one of the letters that is also sometimes heavy and sometimes light. Now it will be light or it will be heavy, we said, in five different conditions. And we mentioned the five conditions. The first one was when the ra comes with the fatha or bamma. The second one we said is when the ra is sakin before it a fatha or dhamma. And then we said the third condition is when the ra is sakin and before it is sakin. And the letter before that has a fatha or dhamma, such as uh, Surah Al Asr, the end of each verse of Surah Al Asr. And the fourth condition we said was if the ra is sakin and before it there is a hamza to wasl, such as irji'i or irtada. And fifthly, and the final condition of the ra being heavy is if the ra is sakin, the letter before it has a kasra. And the letter after it is one of the seven permanent tafkhim letters. And we gave an example of that in Surah Al-Fajri when we say, Inna rabbaka labil mir, labil mir sad, like that, insha'Allah. Now, today we are going to be speaking about the conditions for the ra being light. Now, the letter ra has four conditions when it will come, uh, when it will be light. And before I continue, inshallah ta'ala, I would like to request from all my brothers and sisters to try and scan the QR code they have on the screen in order for them to access the booklet of Tajweed that I've prepared for, for everyone and follow the explanations uh, um, that I give, inshallah ta'ala, as we go along. And this way you can take notes and go back to the booklet if you need to revise or go back to anything, inshallah. So, number one, the, the first condition for the ra being light is when the ra has a kasra. So when we're reciting, for example, Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, غَيْرِ ri. Yes, the ra here has a kasra. So we do not say غَيْرِ ri or ri. It's ri, ri. So making, your, making the ra light would require you, my dear brothers and sisters, to make your tongue very thin. And remember, the ra comes from the tip of the tongue. Make it very thin and lower the back of your tongue. Ri, ri, like this, ri, ri. 
غير المغضوب. Yes, this is this is the first condition condition for the ra being light. Then the second condition for the ra being light, my dear brothers and sisters, is when we have a ra with a sukun and the letter before it has a kasra. However, with no or with none of the seven permanent tafkhim letters coming after the ra, so you will have a ra that is sakin. Before it, the letter would have a kasra. And the letter after the ra is not one of the seven permanent tafkhim letters. And if you have this, then the ra would be light. And the, an example of this would be fir'aun. Fir'aun. You do not say fir'aun. And subhanallah, this specific word, so many people fall into so many mistakes in it. They will either do a qalqal, a majority of people, they do qalqal on it. They say fir'aun, fir'aun, and that is wrong. You must say fir'aun. Because we learned in the last group of attributes that have opposites that the ra is one of the letters of tawassuta, which means it requires a bit of time when pronouncing it. You, it's not a strong letter where you will pronounce it quick and, and get off the letter. No, the ra requires you to give it a bit of time when pronouncing it. So you have to last on it for a bit, such as this. Fir'aun, fir'aun, like that. Um, also, another example would be Firdaus, yeah? Firdaus, you don't say Firdaus or you do not say Firdaus, yeah? Now, some people, the other mistakes people fall into, they may make this Ra heavy. Saying what? Fir, Fir'aun, Fir'aun, it's Fir, Fir'aun, Firdaus. And some of them may repeat it and do a lot of repetition for the Ra, Fir or Fir'aun, no, it's Fir'aun. So all of these things, inshallah ta'ala, keep them in mind when reciting such examples, inshallah. The third condition, my dear brothers and sisters, for the ra being light is when the ra comes with a sukun and the letter before it is a ya sakina. So, and this is so much in the Quran. And it usually comes at the end of verses or in the middle if you stop, but majority of the times it will be at the end of verses. Such as when you say, for example, Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Qadeer. Look at the right here, I made it light. Why? I stopped on it and gave it a sukun. And then I looked before it and there was the letter Ya Sakina. And therefore, this ra would straight away become a light ra. Yes? Excellent. Moving on from this, inshallah ta'ala, and remember this is a lot in the Qur'an. The, 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 the third condition of the ra being light is a lot. So you'll have it, for example, ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ بَصِيرِ قَدِيرِ Like this, yeah? Inshallah. The fourth and final condition for the ra being light is if the ra, and I need you to pay attention with me here, is if the ra has a sukun, the letter before it also has a sukun, and the letter before that has a kasra. So, when I look at the ra, I'm reading, and I stop on this word, for example. As-sihr. Now, this ra I stopped on, I must give it a sukun because I'm stopping. I stopped, I gave the ra a sukun. So from a sukun, of course, as you know from last episode, I cannot decide whether the ra is heavy or light. I need to look at what is surrounding the ra. So now I look to the letter before it always. And from that, sometimes you can tell if the ra is heavy or light. So I looked at the letter before it, which was the, the ha, and it also had a sukun, which means e, I can still not decide whether the ra is heavy or light. Why? Because it, the letter before it also has a sukun. So what do I do in this case? Just like in, in, in the conditions for the ra being heavy, if the ra is sakin before it sakin and the letter before it fatha wa you give the ra heavy. In the same thing here, or similar to it here, you look at the ra, it is sakin. If you look at the letter before it, is it is also sakin. What do I do now? I will go to the letter before that letter. And if that letter has a kasra, then this ra would be light straight away. But however, there is an exception to this condition. And we will come to this in a second. But before we, we go to that, pay attention to the correct way of pronouncing this ra and making it light when you are stopping on it in this example I've given. As-sihr. When I recite, for example, 
واتبعوا ما تتلو الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر يعلمون الناس السحر سحر yes you do not say يعلمون الناس السحر this is a heavy ra and that is wrong you say سحر so your tongue is very thin and you keep it on the upper palate of your mouth inshallah ta'ala I hope that was clear, inshallah. Now, the exception for the ra or for this specific condition is the following. If the ra is sakin, the letter before it is also sakin, and the letter before that has a kasra. However, the letter that is before the ra is one of the seven permanent tafkhim letters, which are also known as isti'la letters. Then this ra you have an option to either make it heavy or light, and it is preferred to make it heavy. Examples of that would be Misr. Yeah, udkhulu Misra. If you stop on it, udkhulu Misr. Now I made the ra heavy. Misr. If I make it light, udkhulu Misr. Misr. Yeah, Misr. And heavy, مصر. And it's preferred to make it heavy. Why? Because it's easier. And we remember all these rules that the scholars have made for, for, for one to be able to recite the Quran correctly. It's, it's because Allah Azza wa made this Quran easy. And we do not try to make it difficult. No, we try to make it easy, inshallah ta'ala. And another example of this is, for, is the word قطر. Yeah, there is a ra sakin. The ta here before it is also sakin. And the letter before that has a kasra. However, the letter before the ra is the letter ta. So you will make this ra either heavy or light. You have the option. However, it is preferred to make it heavy. So we say qitr or qitr. But it's preferred to make it heavy as we mentioned, inshallah ta'ala. I hope this was clear, my dear brothers and sisters. This way we would have finished the, um, the conditions of the ra being heavy and also the conditions for the ra being light. Also, just before we move on, inshallah ta'ala, my, my dear brothers and sisters, a highlight to uh, a word in the Qur'an as well. We said if the ra is sakin and before it there is a kasrah, and after it there is a letter of tafkhim, then we will what? We will make the ra heavy. Such as labil mir sad. Now, there is an exception to this, or an exception to this is a word in the Qur'an, when we see the word firqin, when we see the word firqin, this ra we have is sakin. Before it, there is a kasra, and after it, there is a heavy letter. However, the scholars they had different opinions in this word, or about this word. Sorry. They looked at this qaf that is after the ra and realized that it has a double kasra, yes, or kasr. So it makes the qaf less heavy. And therefore they said this ra, you can make it heavy or light. Now there are different opinions and I'm going to explain them or give a quick summary of them. So this word firqin, the ra in it is sakin. Before it there is a kasra. And after it there is a qaf. However the scholars looked at this qaf and saw that it has a kasra which makes the qaf less heavy. And then they had different opinions in whether to make this ra heavy or light. So they say, they looked at this ra and they said, if you are stopping on this word, if you say firqa, then they said you have two options. To either give it a, uh, give the ra tafkhim or tarqiq. You make the ra, sorry, mufakham or muraqqaq. You make the ra heavy or light. When stopping, you make the uh, sorry when stopping they said the ra will it's preferred to make it heavy and the reason for that is because you are stopping on a qaf there's no no kasr on it if you're stopping on it and therefore it is easy as well to make the ra heavy so you say firqa so this ra my dear brothers and sisters if we're going to stop or oh, sorry on this word then we it's preferred for us to make the ra heavy however you have the option to make it light and if i am going to continue then it is preferred to make the ra heavy 
but I can also make it light. So I can say firqin or firqin. It's preferred, sorry, to make it light. When you're continuing, it's preferred to make it light. However, you have the option to make it heavy, inshallah. I hope that was clear. Moving on from this, my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, we have now finished the rules of Ra. The next topic or the next part we'll be speaking about, it is still under the tafkhim. It is going to be, or we're going to be talking about the levels of tafkhim. There are different levels of tafkhim in the Quran. And we will mention, mention them all, inshallah ta'ala. However, that will be in our next episode. If I can request now, inshallah ta'ala, for all my dear brothers and sisters to open the Quran on Surah Al-Falaq. Alhamdulillah, last episode we recited Surah, or we finished reciting Surah Al-Nas, and we mentioned any highlights or comments we had for my dear brothers and sisters. And today, inshallah, we will recite Surah Al-Falaq, and inshallah, hopefully, we will try and go through any comments or highlights that we have for you on this surah, inshallah. So please open your Quran and follow my recitation. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد Jazakum Allahu khayran wa barakallahu feekum, my dear brothers and sisters, for listening and following. Let's inshallah ta'ala start with our first verse and see what there is there for us to pay attention to. So firstly, the isti'adha and basmalah, the comments apply or anything that we mentioned about isti'adha and basmalah that you must keep in mind is all mentioned at the beginning or one of the first episodes when we started in the in Surah Al-Fatiha. So please go back to that episodes if you've missed it and try and make sure you learn the correct way of saying the isti'adha and basmalah. So we have the verse قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقَ Things to pay attention to my brothers and sisters. Firstly, قُلْ As we said in the same thing in Surah Al-Nas at the beginning, the qaf here make sure you make uh, sure you make sure you keep it heavy and do not change it into uh, or do not make it like ku or do not run your breath on it either otherwise you'll end up changing it into a kaf saying ku and kul is very different than qul we mentioned we said qul which is the correct one we need means to say and kul means to eat and we need of course qul say so we say qul a'udhu Qul, now the lamb here, a lot of people, subhanAllah, they tend to bounce on it. They say, Qul a'udhu. The correct way is, Qul a'udhu. So remember, the lamb, as we mentioned, the same thing about the ra, it requires a bit of time. And it's from the same category as well as the ra, actually. It is from the tawassut attribute. It has the attribute of tawassut, sifatut tawassut, means the attribute of tawassut. So we said, A'udhu, the Hamza and Ayn do not fall into one of three mistakes. Don't fall into making the both of them a Hamza, A'udhu, and do not make them both a Ayn, A'udhu, and do not merge them, saying, saying, Qul A'udhu, Qul A'udhu, Qul A'udhu. Some people say, no, Qul A'u, Qul A'u, A'udhu, Qul A'udhu. And we mentioned also about the Dhal, make sure you do not make it heavy, and then you'll end up turning it into a Dha. Saying a'udhu, it's a'udhu, light. Keep your tongue thin, like a bird's tongue, as they say. Qul a'udhu bi rabbi. Now the ra' here must be heavy as well, inshallah ta'ala. And you should know that, of course, because you've learned now the rules of ra' when they will be heavy and when they would be light. So inshallah azza wa jal, the ra' here, what do people, or what must you pay attention to? Now, do not do this. Qul a'udhu bi ra', bi ra', 
people bring their lips forward and then the ra sounds like it's half a fatha, half a dhamma. It has half a fatha, half a dhamma. And that is incorrect. You must say, Qul a'udhu bira. Bring your lips back. Bira. Like that. Qul a'udhu bira. Bilfalaq. And there's a shadda on the back here. Bira. Bil. And do not bounce on this lamb. Do not say bira. Bilfalaq. Yeah. Qul a'udhu bira. Bilfalaq. The fa is light. And the lamb is light. And then the qaf we have is a heavy qaf. And we must bounce on it. So we say, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaqa. Falaqa. We bounce on it quick. It's a strong letter. You already know that. Because we studied uh, the shadid attribute. And we know the qaf is one of them. And when you stop on it, you have to do a quick bounce. You run away from it. And make sure it's heavy. So this is the correct way. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaqa. Inshallah ta'ala. I hope inshallah ta'ala you have noted this down my dear brothers and sisters and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial for myself and for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Please inshallah ta'ala my dear brothers and sisters until our next episode please remember me in your dua and I will do the same. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ Thank you.